you guys. Dave Mate. Beautiful, beautiful spring day, the beginning of spring. Here we are, Long Island, New York. The place I was born, the place I love. Uh, just drinking mates. This is my fourth year now drinking your mate. I drink it every single day. I love it. Keeps me healthy, keeps me strong, keeps me fit. Uh, mate is a uh, very uh, alkaline food. It uh, alkalinizes the body. Uh, brings it back into homeostasis and it's just something that I'm honored to be a part of drinking mate this community circle of drink and the thousands and millions of other materos the matero is the true mate drinker uh, that takes mate to become a part of their life more than a drink beyond a drink I'm honored to be a part of such a community uh, my name is Dave Mate and this is circle of drink salute So, five misconceptions or five errors that people uh, have been asking me over the past four years about mate, that uh, there's sort of confusion around them. Let's start off with number one, which is the largest one, I would say. Does mate cause cancer? Now, the reason why a lot of people think mate causes cancer is because there's a couple prominent articles on the internet. Uh, that were published by a few uh, cancer-funded websites or cancer institutions, and they highlighted some inconclusive evidence that mate is related to cancer. They uh, they showed uh, how people who were drinking very hot mate they had a higher incidences uh, of getting cancer, or people who were drinking mate with high consumption of tobacco. Of course. Those things are just obvious. Those things are, had nothing to do with the actual substance of mate uh, causing cancer, but the situation in which it was drunk, of course. So, for instance, if I drink hot green tea all day long, very hot green tea that's burning my throat, of course that's going to increase my chances of getting cancer because of the thermal injury that's taking place on the lining of my uh, esoph esophagus. So, that's where a lot of the confusion comes in. Up to this date, there's been no conclusive evidence to show that mate causes cancer. Absolutely none. There's been a lot of evidence that shows mate to destroy cancer cells. In 2008, there was a study done, and you know I don't support uh, scientific uh, studying on animals. I just don't support it. I don't like it. But the fact of the matter is it's out there, and I'm going to study it. The scientists have done it. So I'm going to relay some of that information to you today. In 2008, there was a study done where they injected uh, uh, esophageal uh, cell squamous uh, carcinoma, which is a fancy way of saying throat cancer, to rats. And after eight weeks, the cancer was proliferating, you know, cell mutation. There was definitely legions on the, on the rats' throats. And uh, during those eight weeks, they were feeding it cancer. I mean, I'm sorry, they were feeding the rats uh, yerba mate. And after the eight weeks, they took a sample of what was going on with the cancer, and the cell proliferation significantly reduced. Uh, the lesions were reduced. The DNA uh, destruction of the, of, the, uh, of the cells were being reduced as a result of the cancer. So, without a doubt... That study showed that mate was uh, actually uh, reducing cell proliferation of cancer. So it was slowing cancer down. It was stopping the cancer of the, of the rats. That was in 2008, a well-documented study. In 2011, uh, the foremost mate scientist, Elvira de Mejia, and this lady, she is the foremost scientist of yerba mate in the world right now. She's funded, she has her own lab, she works in Toxicology Center of University of Illinois. This lady is funded. Uh, excuse me, I should call her a doctor, her proper title. She's a doctor. Uh, and she showed in vitro, which means in, a, in glass or in a contained environment, mate to destroy uh, colon cancer cells. Destroyed it. The colon cancer uh, had to deconstruct, it had to uh, literally commit suicide, it destroyed itself because the mate was working together to destroy 
these, uh, these, uh, the cancerous cells. That's a well-published study. It's been published since 2011. It got a lot of media coverage, but yet we still have a lot of people. And I can't blame you. I can't blame you because you search on the internet and you, and you hear these things. You get worried. You don't. Of course, you don't want to do anything that causes cancer. But you have to understand a basic scientific tenet. And I'm not a scientist. I'm talking as a layperson. So you know, please excuse me if I misconstrue things myself. But Every set of experiments has a control. It has some sort of baseline, and within this control, you have different variables. So there is no such thing as a, as a scientific uh, case study or scientific report that encompasses all possible controls. That goes counter to what a scientific study is. A scientific study is when you have a control. So, for instance, say you're studying mate to cause cancer. Well, your control may be... Mate causing cancer because of the uh, the contaminants in which the sheets that lay on the sheets when mate is being dried out on the sun. That's your control. But you're not taking into account many other factors that, had you known they were a part of that experiment, maybe you wouldn't have come to that conclusion that mate causes cancer because of something else. So basically, if you read the research, read it well, you'll see that there's no scientific studies that conclusively show or prove mate to cause cancer. So it's, it's in my opinion and in my conclusion based upon the research that mate does not cause cancer. But yet there are some variables in which mate uh, is produced or dried or uh, perhaps even consumed which can, in those respects, uh, increase the likelihood of self-proliferation, of uh, uh, neoplasis, of you know creating cancer somewhere in your body. So with that said, overall... Drinking mate alone and drinking it just purely the proper way with the proper temperature, you're going to be okay. Okay, now let's talk about another mistake or another misconception. Mate and caffeine. Does mate have caffeine? Does mate have ma mateine? What is mateine? <clears throat> well, mateine doesn't exist. There's no such thing as mateine. Mate has caffeine. It's about the same exact amount of caffeine in mate. You know, a lot of this comes in, I'm not going to go into the history of it, but there were studies done where the scientists thought that they discovered mateen. But that was sufficiently debunked later on by other scientists showing that caffeine cannot transfigure. It's not a stereosomer. It can't transform into mateen. That's what scientists thought that it was happening. But it's impossible because there's no link, there's no stereocenter which is, acts as a sort of bridge where a molecule could reconfigure and turn into another molecule. Uh, caffeine doesn't have that. So, mateine doesn't exist, to make a long story short. Uh, you know, all, most scientists agree that it doesn't exist. It's just a marketing effort overlaid with a, a faulty science, incorrect science, overlaid with just a language issue where people just start to call uh, caffeine in respect to mate, mate, but it doesn't exist. Caffeine does exist in mate, and I don't want to go too deep into that, but it seems to work differently. When you drink mate, even though there's caffeine in it, you don't really get jittery, you don't really get all like shaky and nervous. Uh, that's because of the other interacting chemicals like theophylline, theobromine, theanine, things like that, that help to soothe you, calm you down, and, uh, and uh, actually comfort you increase your well-being. So mate does not contain mateine. It does contain caffeine, just about the same amount. Alright. Another situation is, is mate a drug? Now, no, mate is not a drug. In the common way we define a drug now, mate is not a drug. Webster Dictionary defines drug as any substance that is consumed that has a physiological effect or change on the body. So with that definition, water is a drug. When I drink water, there's a physiological change in my body. When I eat grass, there's a physiological change in my body. When I, you know, absorb air, there's a physiological change in my body. But really, you know, the modern day definition or the modern day connotation of drug is really narcotics, it's really alkaloids, it's really something that we isolate 
from a plant or from other compounds in concentrated form, like Advil, cocaine, uh, crack, uh, you know, NyQuil. These are all what we consider drugs. They have a very uh, uh, focused uh, goal to either stimulate your body or depress your body. Mate cannot be defined or categorized as a drug. I don't think so. Uh, mate doesn't stimulate only, and it doesn't depress your body. It actually does both. It works on the uh, uh, the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, which basically, basically means that it helps to harmonize your body. It acts as a stimulant and it acts as a depressant uh, intelligently. So, I cannot call mate a drug. Uh, if I were to call it a drug, and again, guys, I'm not a scientist. I'm just some kid studying mate. And I love it. So, please, if you're a scientist or if you're a medical doctor, you're a naturopathic doctor, you're a homeopathic doctor, please inform me. You guys have the medical degrees. I don't. I'm just my own researcher, and I just drink mate every day. I just want to qualify myself. Uh... I would, I would, I would, if I'm going to classify mate as a drug, I would say it's a euphoriant. It's something that brings about a feeling of well-being and euphoria. Uh, I wouldn't consider it a drug. It's, it's just an herb. It's a food stuff. It's plant matter. It's like saying oregano is a drug or saying uh, chamomile is a drug. No, they're just herbs. We consume them. They're food. They're healthy. They're not drugs. Mate is not a drug. If you drink it, you can still drive your car. If you drink it, you're going to pass all the drug tests. You're not going to jail. You know, your PO officer is not going to call you up and say you failed. It actually helps to detoxify your body. All right, so the next one. Let's see. We're up to three. The next one, let's talk about water. Should mate water be boiled or should it be just regular cold water? I get a lot of questions like that. Well, the answer is you can make mate cold. That's called terere. T-E-R-E-R-E with a accent over the last E. Terere. Terere. That's mostly drunk in Paraguay. That's the national way of them drinking mate there. The national fashion of them drinking mate. They make it with ice water, uh, lemon, uh, they call it mate shushos, mate with herbs. I don't really like it that much. It's okay. They love it in Paraguay. So you can make mate with just purely cold water. Maybe one day I'll make a video on that. Now, if you're going to make mate with hot water, you have uh, an option if you want to make a, properly, a proper mate with hot water. You can make it anywhere between 150 to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. 150 to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. Anything over, I'd say 180, you're pushing it, buddy. It's gonna, you're gonna burn your mate. You're gonna destroy the vital, uh, delicate nutrients of the mate. And at that point, I mean, you're not really drinking mate. You're drinking something else. You're drinking so You're drinking an espresso mate. You know, you're gonna get that initial burst of a uh, you know, rush, you're going to get those compounds that are coming in, but after that, the flavor is going to be insipid, it's going to be dead, the nutrients will be really diminished. I mean, that's an espresso. You're talking about a mate espresso. That's not mate. Uh, go ahead if you want to do that. You know, if you're going to use boiling water, boiling point 212, 212 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, which some companies mistakenly tell you to do, like David's Teas, you know, they tell you to boil your, your mate water. Uh, Tivana, they tell you to boil your mate water. I'm sorry, you guys. That's not mate. What are you doing? Tell people to make mate properly. And I understand what they're doing. It's marketing. It's, it's marketing, you know. I don't want to go off on a tangent, but let's go off on a tangent. You know, they take their mate and they mix it with like a million different herbs, chunks of mango and, you know, pomegranate, chocolate. And that's okay. I make mixed mates myself. But what I think that they're trying to do is they're trying to get all these other herbs, you know, all these other plants and chunks of fruit, add a little bit of mate to it, and then tell you to boil the water. Why do they do that? Because what they're doing is they're creating an infusion. That infusion needs the high temperature. It needs 200 degrees Fahrenheit in order to properly infuse and get the essential oils out of those chunks of mango, out of the mint, you know, out of the black tea. And then you have that little mate that they added. 
So there's a conflict. There's an inherent conflict in what they're selling. They're saying it's mate, but really it's just an herbal infusion. Because when you bring the water up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, you're getting your herbal infusion from the mango and cacao and all the chunks of other stuff they added to it, all the flower, rose petals, what have you. But the mate is being totally destroyed. Mate cannot sustain that sort of heat. So effectively, they're not selling mate, but they're marketing it as mate. They know this. I think that they do, but yet they continue to do it. Uh, God bless their souls. I don't know. I mean, business is business, I guess. Let them do what they want to do. Thank God there's people out there that really know the deal about mate and really know how to consume it. Let's keep on spreading that information. I hope David's Tea uh, and uh, Tivana and a lot of these other companies, multi, multi-million dollar companies, they got nothing wrong against that, you know. Nothing against that. Uh, you know, make money, that's good, no problem. But uh, let's do it in a way where we're giving people good information. Uh... And the last but not least, the fifth error or misconception, let's say, is mate tea. No, mate is not a tea. Tea only comes from one plant, uh, Camellia sinensis. That's the only tea plant in the world. Black tea, white tea, yellow tea, oolong tea, pure tea, earl grey tea, that all comes from one plant. Now, based upon how that plant has been fermented, based upon what buds, in what season, in what climate, in what elevation, you produce different grades of tea. How long it's been aged, whether it's been roasted, what have you. Those produce the grades of tea. You know, teas grown in different countries, different regions, those all have to do with the different grades, flavors, tastes, textures of tea, just like mate. But those are all tea, that's one tea plant. Mate is a holly plant. It comes from the, uh, the Ilex family, Ilex pedaguadiensis, which has about 400 or so species, several of which have been consumed for millennia. Even here in, in, uh, in North America, there was a, a sort of black tea, they called it, the Indians, a sort of a Ilex vomitoria is the scientific name, I believe. And they kind of drunk it for... Uh, uh, ceremonial becoming of age sort of situations and actually from what I understand made them vomit and purge them it had purgatory effects that's a cousin of mate and then there's a uh, Duomosa and then there's a uh, Argentina it looks Argentina I believe many many cousins of mate so mate is a holly plant it's not a tea now yes okay I'll give you some leeway we call tea anything that we infuse nowadays we call it tea you know you take some peppermint we call it peppermint tea. We take some uh, chamomile, we call it chamomile tea. But I don't know, call me a purist. In my mind, there's only one tea Camellia sinensis. And then you have other things. You got chamomile, you know, you got uh, peppermint, you got lemon verbena, you got uh, bergamot, which is not a tea at all. That's a, that's a leaf from an orange, you know. So, mate is not a tea. Mate is mate. It's an herb from South America, consumed for thousands of years, and that's amazing. So I hope I wasn't too heady, you know, with this uh, rant on uh, trying to correct people. I just love mate. I'm trying to bring out the best of mate, trying to bring forth information. Of course, I'm still a student to mate. As much as I devoted my time to it over the four years, I'm still such a student. I'm still such a novice. Uh, I'm still learning every single day. And I just love this drink, what can I say? Salud, my name is Dave Mate. Please continue to watch these videos. Uh, from time to time, I hope you watch it to the end of these videos. I'm going to be offering uh, coupon codes that will be valid for one week. So, today's coupon code is going to be called Mate is not tea. Mate is not tea. I'm going to put it right here. So if you purchase anything from circleofdrink.com over the next week from the date that this video has been published, uh, let's say you're going to get a 15% discount on anything that you purchase. So put in the code when you check out Mate is not tea, you will get a 15% discount from anything on the store. When you share this video with your friends, and feel free to share that coupon information with your friends who want to get into Mate. Uh, 
just my way of saying thank you for watching these videos. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you so much. This is Dave Monte, Circle of Drinks. Salud. I hope you're having a good time wherever you're at. Peace out.